Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiser here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with infections of both ears, and I suspect that this type of infection the patient is suffering from is called otomycosis. Otomycosis is the medical term given for a fungal infection, and they account for around 10% of all outer ear infections. So the most common type of ear infection is bacterial otitis externa, and uh, about 10% or so are fungal. And fungal infections are more typical in warm, humid, moist conditions where mould and yeast can invade inside the ear and it provides the perfect breeding grounds for these um, moulds and yeast and fungi to colonise and reproduce and spread within the ear. Um, however, they can also occur secondary to uh, a bacterial ear infection. So if you've suffered from a bacterial ear infection and you were given um, antibiotics, these antibiotics can also kill um, healthy bacteria that reside on the surface of the skin in the ear. So our skin um, has its own ecosystem. We call it skin flora, and it's made up of uh, mainly um, healthy bacteria, but also fungi and uh, viruses as well. And these help to protect the, uh, the skin. But when you use antibiotics, um, obviously it can also kill the healthy bacteria, which leaves um, uh, less competition for the fungi um, to then invade the ear and start to reproduce and colonize uh, the, fu the harmful fungi. So um, the most typical type of fungi that occur in ear infections is Aspergillus um, niger, which is what I think the patient's got in this ear. And the, the landmarks of Aspergillus niger are these woolly strands, as you can see. It almost looks like a spider's web and also sometimes um, yellow, white, and black fungal spores. So uh, Aspergillus niger is a lot easier to diagnose, and they account for about, let's say, 80% of uh, fungal ear infections. And uh, the remaining uh, 10 to 20% of ear, ear, uh, fungal infections are candida. And candida is a bit more difficult to diagnose because it presents itself as uh, otter ear, which is ear discharge, and, or so does um, bacterial inf uh, infections. Um, in my experience, fungal infect candida is a bit more thicker and creamier, and I suspect that the patient has got candida in their right ear. So this is the patient's left ear. We know they've got Aspergillus niger in this ear. We can see those woolly white strands. Um, the patient did also report to me that they had been using antibiotics for uh, uh, bacterial infection elsewhere which makes them more susceptible to then, as I explained, to developing a fungal infection secondary to having treatment of a bacterial infection. Um, in addition, the patient regularly uses um, olive oil um, spray in the ear. And if you've got a fungal infection, the olive oil is going to actually make the fungal infection worse because the fungi will uh, feed off the olive oil. So if ever you've got a fungal infection, just, just stop using the olive oil um, uh, spray medical grade spray or drops until the infection is completely resolved so i'm just peeling away this last bit of skin one of the biggest symptoms of a fungal infection is psoriasis so severe itching of the ear now that also can occur with a bacterial infection but um, uh, about 90 uh, to a plus percent of people with a fungi infection that's one of their main complaints uh, a, f a fungal infection can also cause a tympanic perforation or hole in the eardrum and that's because the fungi can cause a blood clot in the blood uh, blood vessels and capillaries adjacent to the eardrum so the eardrum is then starved of um, the blood that it needs and the nutrients and the oxygen and you begin to get necrosis so it's a, a, a decaying of the eardrum so it, I think that's about 20% of ear fungal infections can also um, cause um, a tympanic perforation. You can also sometimes get a dual infection, a bacterial and um, a fungi infection. And so when you watch the right ear, it's a bit more difficult to diagnose. I think they have got a, a bit of Aspergillus niger in there as well, because there is some black fungal spores sitting on the surface of the 
the artery, the air discharge that they've got, and um, the, the discharge itself, it's either candida, which I think it is, it's, it looks really um, creamy and thick, just like candida normally is. And because the patient has just recently used some antibiotics, um, it just gives, it increases my suspicion that the discharge is more fungi related than bacterial. But um, I've written to the patient's GP, advised them to take an ear swab because it's probably the only way you're going to differentiate between the candida and a fungal infect, uh, a bacterial infection. So cause if they've got a fungal infection and they, they use antibiotics, it's just going to get worse, a fungal infection. So it's important that they are administered the correct medication. And things to do to prevent ear infections in general is avoid water in the ear. If you do get water in your ear, it's important to try and dry out your ear. You can do that in several ways. You can instill some acetic acid drops in the ear alongside rubbing alcohol. So one part rubbing alcohol, one part um, acetic acid, so um, white uh, vinegar, white wine vinegar, for example. And what the acetic acid does, it helps to reacidify the ear. So if you get water in the ear, it, it increases the pH of your ear. And having a, a lower pH, an acidic pH, is quite important for the ear because that's um, believed to help inhibit harmful bacterial and fungi growth. And if you do get water in your ear, it washes away some of the natural acidity in the ear. So the acetic acid helps to reacidify the ear. Um, and what the rubbing alcohol does, and I'll come back to that in a moment, but you can see this is a really, this is their right ear. It's very thick, creamy discharge. And so I think it's candida. And you can see some fungal spores, I, I, I believe, there, which I'm going to, remove in a moment and it's just sitting on the underside there we are so what the rubbing alcohol does as well it homogenizes it with any water in the ear so it absorbs water and the water and the rubbing alcohol kind of become one new um, homogenous um, solution in the ear and of course alcohol's got a lower evaporation rate than water so it can dry out any moisture so it, essentially the alcohol absorbs the water then it evaporates a lot quicker at a lower temperature so it prevents the skin from macerating. So it, the skin that lines the ear canal, it's hydrophilic, it absorbs water. And if it overhydrates, the skin cells, they burst at the membranes. And the, the outer layer of skin, the epidermis layer, which is the, the protective barrier, it protects the inner layers of the skin, the dermis and the subcutaneous layer. That epidermis skin barrier is breached, it's broken down, it's macerated, so then fungi and infection can penetrate deeper into the dermis layer and it can lead to acute uh, dermatitis or otitis externa. Um, so it's important to get rid of water out your ear. We also sell a different type of drops on our Clearwax website. We only ship to the UK, um, but if you visit the, the, the link there, um, www.clearwax.co.uk and visit our public shop. There's a drops called Clear Relief Drops. And the Clear Relief Drops work similarly to one part rubbing alcohol, one part um, um, white vinegar, um, in that it contains glycerol. Now, glycerol works similarly to the alcohol. It, it homogenizes when you need water it, so it absorbs excessive water in the ears. So if you've got swelling or actual physical water in the ear, the glycerol absorbs it. However, the glycerol doesn't evaporate as well as um, alcohol, so that glycerol can still remain in the ear, but glycerol has got this oily uh, characteristic, and that oily, fatty characteristic can then almost line the ear canal and, and hydrate and nourish it and prevent uh, external water from being absorbed into the skin. So it works differently uh, at, its, um, it, at its root, its mechanism is slightly different, but it absorbs water, but it doesn't evaporate it. Instead, the glycerol, the water, they combine, uh, they homogenize, and that glycerol, it's a, a, a kind of an oily substance and it just coats the ear canal and it it helps to hydrate, to nourish it. Um, also, the clear relief drops contain um, lidocaine, which is a topical anesthetic. It's what dentists use typically to numb and uh, anesthetize your, your mouth when they're performing dental procedures. So if you've got any associated pains, lidocaine can provide some topical relief of that pain. Um, you can use a hair dryer from a distance, of course. Don't get it too close to the ear. Um, trying to have it at an eco temperature so it's neither too warm or too cold. 
uh, because that can cause the caloric effect and f- uh, cause you from suffering from vertigo. So you can hold it from a distance, do it in a little burst, just so you feel a gentle breeze and that can help um, dry out the ear if you've got excessive moisture. Um, if it, So the, the key is to avoid water in your ear, but if you do get water in your ear, you can use, as I said, the three options there. Hair dryer, you can use a combination. The clear relief drops that we sell are on our website. Um, uh, or acetic acid, so you can get that over the counter, but it's good to get acetic acid as well as the rubbing alcohol. Um, so th- there sh- should be some solutions out there. Um, some ENT advise that you can develop your own. So as I said, it's one part rubbing alcohol and one part um, white vine vinegar, for example. Um, so that's acetic acid. And that will help to calm your ear down and hopefully dry it out and provide an acidic environment for the ear so it prevents the reproduction of harmful bacteria and fungi. Now what I'm trying to do here is just remove as much debris as possible. You can see that we've done a lot already. There's a lot of discharge there. I'm just trying to remove as much as I can as, uh, but without traumatising the ear. Uh, this patient's right ear, as you can see, it's quite inflamed. There's a lot of edema. Um, when you've got inflamed skin, it's more sensitive. It's it's more it's it becomes not only tender and more painful for the patient when we're in the ear when we're touching the surface, but we can cause further trauma because when it's already traumatized, so that it can actually make the infection worse. So I'm just trying to remove this outer layer of you can see this dead skin that's just lining the ear because of the infection. If I can remove this, it allows the topical uh, uh, antifungal drops, if it's a fungal infection or bacterial drops, to work its magic. It can penetrate the skin and come in contact with the bacteria and fungi directly so it's more effective. Um, now, for, for ear infections, most ENT would recommend topical um, uh, antifungal or um, antibacterial drops as, to, as opposed to oral or what we call systematic um, antibiotics or antifungal medication um, anti uh, systematic oral antibiotics are sometimes given for more severe ear infections uh, where topical antibiotics are um, not as effective so for example if you've got necrotizing otitis externa which is a potentially life-threatening condition and that's when the temporal bone and the, or the mastoid bone or both or the skull base so the bone around the ear and surrounding parts of the ear becomes infected we call that osteomyelitis um, sometimes that can come secondary from just your normal otitis externa it is quite a, a rare condition and those people that um, do, who do suffer from uh, necrotizing otitis externa there's more of a, a tendency for those patients to be either elderly and or diabetic and or immunocompromised it doesn't mean that if you're young healthy and fit that you can't get it uh, but it is rare but it um, in, the, in the event that someone who does get it, they're the kind of the population you could be more concerned about who are more likely to get it. So, and that needs urgent ENT referral because as I said that can be life threatening if left untreated. Um, so it's just a bit of debris on this back part of the eardrum, just gently peeling it away. Now, you won't see it on this, but some of you may know from watching my last few videos or if you've been watching my other YouTube channel, the Clear Wax, the link's in the description, I've developed another device called the Waxscape and um, we've also developed a zoom feature. So it helps us zoom in a bit closer. Now, with an endoscope, do you really need the zoom feature? Well, not as much because with an what I'm using here, the iClearscope endoscope, if you want to zoom in on any part of the ear we just simply put the endoscope deeper in the ear and things magnify but with the wax scope and like and, and like for example operate operating ENT microscope you can't really go you, the lens is out of the ears it's, it's uh, an exoscope as opposed to an endoscope so t- you a zoom function is very useful you can then zoom in deeper into the ear but with an endoscope the zoom feature is not as effective it is still pretty good now I actually performed a lot of this part of the procedure with using the zoom function and it really zoomed in. But there's a bit of a glitch on the app where although when I'm doing the procedure live, it's zoomed in, but it's not 
at the moment recording um, all the time. In the previous videos, I was using sc screen recording on the iPhone, then going into the app, so and then zooming in. But when you're recording within the app itself at the moment, there's a bit of a glitch. Hopefully, it's a bit of a tricky thing to fix, but hopefully we can do it. But yeah, um, although you can't see it, I was actually zoomed in. Uh, it really, it helps when you've got a narrow ear canal, so when you've got an inflamed ear canal, because in those ears, it might be a bit difficult to put the endoscope into the ear as deep as you want because the, in, the, the, the restricted space and when you've got an instrument in there. So in that case, you can have the endoscope not as deep in the ear and just zoom. So your the endoscope's not restricted. Uh, it's The restricted space within the ear canal is not going to hinder the magnification because you don't have to insert the endoscope any deeper. You can just simply magnify the view and zoom in. So we're nearly there. You see, it's a lot cleaner. There's always going to be a bit of debris, guys. We're not going to get a really little less speck out. But I'm really pleased with that. And if you just, you can kind of look at the beginning of this writer in particular, see what the condition of the ear is like and see what it's like now. We feel we've given the best opportunity for this patient to respond to whichever uh, type of infection they've got. Uh, they're going to start up with anti antifungal of drops um, because they've just recently had antibiotics so we think we do I, I do think it's a fungal infection but just ask the GP to take an, uh, a swab as soon as possible so hopefully they can get that early next week and get the right treatment patients are not going to use any olive oil they do swim um, so that's when to just stop it. <laughs> be really careful and ideally avoid that environment it's not only getting water in your ear, but when you're in the swimming baths and uh, all that steam, um, humidity, again, that can give rise to a fungal infection. So hopefully we can nip this infection in the bird as soon as possible. It's just a bit of skin in the inferior recess. I'm just stretching the ear open. You can see this ear canal in comparison to the left ear. It's more inflamed, there's a lot more edema. So edema is the uh, name for swelling. And I've just bent that fine end. You can see the curvatures and that helps us to avoid contact with the front part of the ear canal. If that suction tube was straight and I was trying to get that piece of dead skin from the right corner of the anterior recess, it would come in contact with the front part of the ear canal and graze it and become very uncomfortable for the patient. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.